Principle 4 states that the ocean made the earth habitable. Everyone knows that oxygen makes the earth habitable, but where does oxygen come from? All oxygen originated from the ocean and allowed to develop life and even today still provides all the nutrients needed for survival. All the oxygen originated from photosynthetic organisms, organisms that use sunlight as a source of energy to make food, glucose. Three billion years ago, cyanobacteria were able to use sunlight, gases, and water to synthesize organic molecules, which led to oxygen gas as a waste product. The molecule, it excites some of its electrons and causes them to leave the molecule. Light also splits a water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen is a waste product. 2.5 billion years ago, most of the oxygen produced through photosynthesis, the process of turning sunlight into energy was used in oxidizing reduced compounds, which led to vast sediment deposits and changing the chemistry of the ocean and sediments. Iron began to be deposited on the sea floor. It began to become oxidized. The salt of oxygen accumulated in the ocean as free reduced compounds became oxidized. The accumulation of the oxygen in the ocean floor allowed for aerobic bacteria to use oxygen in a new biochemical pathway allowing ATP energy to be produced efficiently. As oxygen began to increase, organisms began to evolve and rely on sunshine, carbon dioxide, and water in order to produce food, which in turn released oxygen. This energy efficient biochemical pathway that developed in aerobic bacteria, along with oxygen in the ocean, allowed for the development of complex oceanic eukaryotic cells about 2 billion years ago. Between 2.3 and 2.4 billion years ago, the oxygen concentration in the ocean was high enough that it started to escape and accumulate in the atmosphere, where it formed ozone, blocking much of the UV radiation from reaching the Earth's surface. Multicellular life, which requires high oxygen levels, developed about 1 billion years ago. By 550 million years ago, free oxygen and ozone levels were high enough to allow the development of terrestrial organisms. Photosynthesis produces oxygen gas and is balanced by a loss of oxygen gas through respiration, decay of organisms, and oxidation of exposed minerals. The burial of some dead organisms in the seafloor sediments prevents their decay and keeps atmospheric oxygen near 20%. There is no steady state of oxygen gas on geological timescales. Oxygen and carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere change within relatively wide limits, controlled by a combination of logical, geological, and chemical processes. Many of the early species are extinct, but the remains can still be seen in ancient ocean settlements. They are the earliest evidence of life. Millions of different species of organisms on Earth today can be related by descent from common ancestors that evolved in the ocean and continue to evolve today. One dominant theory about the evolution of early life forms is that they evolved about 3.5 million years ago. Organisms such as the low fin fishes are known to be the first multicellular vertebrate organisms to invade land from the ocean. These fishes evolved into amphibians, which evolved into reptiles, then birds, and eventually mammals. Most living organisms, including all animals, fungi, and protists, are eukaryotes that evolved from prokaryotes. Fossil record of ancient life forms provides evidence for the theory of evolution and the important role the ocean played on the evolution of Earth. The evolution of whales is an example of microevolution since it had been said that their ancestors once walked on land. Since oxygen did begin in the ocean, organisms such as phytoplankton began to develop. Such organisms use photosynthesis to create food and release oxygen. Now, these organisms produce more than half of the oxygen in the earth. Nitrogen is present in low concentrations in seawater. It also helps plants grow by making proteins and nucleic acids. Phytoplankton also uses nitrogen to survive. 70% of Earth is covered in water by the Atlantic, Pacific, Arctic, and other southern oceans. It absorbs, stores, and releases large quantities of heat. Water changes temperature slowly. For example, when summer comes along, the water is still cold at the beginning of summer, but begins to warm up by the end of summer. When autumn comes along, the water is most likely to still be warm. Another example is the lengthy process icebergs go through in order to melt.